Imagine Midjourney and Photoshop had a baby. Well, you no longer have to imagine because Adobe have just released generative AI with inside Photoshop and it's mind blowing, it's so good. And today I'm gonna to show you how to download it, how to use it and specific use cases that you can use it for. Now tools like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion have been around for a while, but they've yet to have been adopted by the masses for everyday use and practical scenarios. I use Midjourney, I pay for Midjourney, but I don't use it every day within my content creation process. Every now and then I'll get an asset or two for thumbnails, but it's mainly for inspiration and just, let's be honest, having fun. But Adobe have just added generative AI in Photoshop and it's called Generative Fill. You can use it to generate objects, backgrounds, extend images, and also remove objects, which is very similar to Content Aware Fill, but now I'm guessing it's even better because it uses AI. So let's get started. Now, this feature is currently in beta and depending on when you're watching this video, it's possible that it's no longer the case. So the first thing you wanna do is go up to window and just make sure you've got contextual taskbar activated. And this is this little taskbar, which will help us with the AI generated prompts. But if it's not there yet and you have updated Photoshop, you just wanna to go to beta apps and download the beta version of Photoshop, which has the generative AI fill tool. So the first picture we're going to work on is this picture right here, which is a picture of a young Alec at the beach on some water. And now all I want to do is actually add a boat behind me. So I'm just going to select this selection right here. And once I've done that, as you'll notice in the contextual taskbar, I've got this generated fill button. So I can just open this up and type in boat, click generate. And now this takes about 30 seconds for me, but just to save you time, I'm going to speed every single one of these up. But as you can see, a boat has now been generated and it basically almost looks like it was already there. Now, if we take a look at the contextual taskbar, we can actually see that we're on the first of three options. So I can actually go through by clicking on these arrows and see the different boats within this image. But if I'm not happy, I could actually then just click on the prompt again and change it. I could type in red boat, generate. As you can see, I've got some red boat options and I've still got my previous ones there and I can see all of them on the right anyway. So I can just quickly go through these and I can even see the prompt that was used for each one. As you can see here, red boat, here, just boat. Before I go on to the next examples, I'm still gonna play around with this image because we can change it so much thanks to AI and it will still look pretty realistic. First thing I'm gonna do is actually just right click and I'm going to rasterize the layer so I can remove myself using AI. So now that's done, all I'm going to do is go over here and just click on the remove tool. So now I can actually use the brush and just go through and select myself. As you can see, it's now removing me and AI is actually then just gonna use the rest of the image for context and then use AI to fill it. As you can see, it basically looks like I was almost never there. Here, you can actually notice that there's a few blurs and it just looks a little strange. But what I can do if I then just select this whole thing again, and I'm just going to click generate to fill, and I'm gonna type water generate. And it's basically gonna use the context of everything it sees right here to regenerate the water and maybe some of the sky. But if we take a look at these islands in the back, as you can see, this looks now a lot more flawless. And I can flick through, I've got a few different background designs. But here I've removed items and added some items. But what I'm gonna do here is actually just replace this. Now this is quite a complex photo. And if I just select the smoothie and the napkin, right? All I'm gonna do is click generate a fill. And this time I'm just gonna type, let's just say golden trophy. Okay, cause I'm staring in shock. Now, as you can see, there's a few mistakes here. So I can just skim through these. And then if none of them are perfect, I could even just click generate again. And then it's gonna generate a few more for me, or I just play around a little bit with the prompt. As you can see, looks a lot better. And this trophy, like fits very well on the table. It fits very well with the perspective of the image. And what's impressive is that you can still see behind like the sofa behind the image. And if I flick through, we've got a few different examples and they all still have the counter, even though if I actually remove it, you can see that like it's used the context to add this little bit of countertop, hide the straw and the wall, which is just super impressive. And now what's actually super cool is these are actually images that are generated like so, so it's almost like a puzzle piece that they just fit on top. And there you can kind of understand how this can become super useful to replace objects and items in images. And you can make this anything you want. If I go into the next example, here I've got a photo of me in front of the beach with an ice cream. And let's just say I wanted to, oh wait, actually, that was a beer. <laughs> Got this is what's crazy, right? It, just at a glance, things look super real. Here, 
it's actually like fit the glass in perfectly behind my fingers. And this is a real life scenario. Let's say you don't want people to think you're an alcoholic, but you still want to post this lovely picture on Instagram. I am not drunk. Through the glass, you can still see the shirt. It's still kind of warped and it's just super impressive. Again, I've got all of these prompts saved and some of them, like here, it's still got my thumb wrapped around. It does look a little bit weird on my hand, but this one looks pretty solid. But that's what it looked like before. And it's just super, super impressive. Let's go on to the next example. So the next example is extending images. So I actually generated this image in Mid Journey. It's a piano transformer. And what I'm going to do is extend the image because Mid Journey can't generate 16 by nine images, but I want a 16 by nine image of this piano transformer. So I can actually select the area on the canvas that I want to fill, and I just click generate to fill, and I can just leave it blank, and it will use the rest of the context of the image to then fill up this space. And now I've tried highlighting two sections at the same time, but it makes it glitch out a little bit, so you only want to do one section at a time. But as you can see, like I've just added that, and it looks like it's so part of the image. And I just select the other side, click generate to fill again, generate, leave it blank, so it's going to use the context, and that way it like stays in the same art style, um, and it looks the same, it just looks flawless. I mean, look at that. And then if we wait for the other side, I mean, literally look at that. That looks like it was just all done by Mid Journey from the start. And then if I want to add to this, I've just typed in robot hand holding Thor's hammer. Not amazing, as you can see, but it's still, see that one's, that one's almost better. But these look as if they were like generated. I, I don't know, the, it looks flawless, right? You can't see where it started being generated or not. So I don't know, this is just, it's just incredible, super fun. Now, here's another one. Let's say uh, you're bald and you want to add some hair. Um, let's just say, pink hair. This looks, you get the point, it almost looks realistic, you know. Anyway, next example is an image of me right here. And I'm going to replace my top. And let's just say we're on a pink theme. I'm going to go pink suit. And as you can see, we've got a pink suit and I've got a few options, subtle pink, nice bright pink, or just a shirt in pink. And what's crazy is you can tell that like the main light source on my face is coming from the right. So the AI picked that up and did the same thing to the suit. As you can see, the pink is brighter on the right, which makes it look super realistic. And then let's just say I want to add some like sunglasses, right, to my face. And as you can see, like I've got some sunglasses, I've got three different options and they look like super realistic. <laughs> So that's a few fun examples. Now, the one I'm using it the most for at the moment is for thumbnails. So here's a thumbnail that I made without any AI at all. So this was all done in Photoshop. Let's say I wanna put more of an emphasis on it for AI, right? So let's say I want to be a cyborg. I could select part of Ryan's face and let's just say I type in robot face, generate. Uh, this robot eye actually looks pretty cool and it puts an emphasis on the AI part. But I've turned Ryan into a cyborg in like just seconds, whereas editing something like this into an image and making it look realistic is super hard. Let's say um, I wanted to then add a face mask and boom. And just looking at this, this thumbnail looks very well done. The elements in it look super real, which is what makes a thumbnail look high quality. This looks like this image was actually a part of the photo or it looks like I actually just edited that in, but that took me seconds rather than let's say 30 minutes or an hour. And by the way, I do want to mention that the generative fill actually uses Adobe's Firefly engine and that is taught off all of Adobe's stock assets. But that is how to use Photoshop's AI. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I'd love to hear what you're going to be making with Photoshop's generative fill AI. This is only the beginning for Photoshop and AI and it's only going to get much, much better. Super excited. Peace.